with Broadside. Hello. Hello. Do you guys want to start by saying your names and positions? Yes, my name is Oliver. I am currently in the far left position of the bench. <laughs> I see. <laughs> you think you're funny, huh? My name is Oliver and I sing in the band. Jeez. Broadside the band. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dorian and I play guitar and sing in Broadside as well. Yeah. Yes. That's right. cool. And then who are we missing? We are missing Niles, our guitar player. Niles Gregory Gibbs. Gra Niles Gregory Gibbs. Andrew Dutton, our Andrew drummer. Andrew Dutton, our drummer. And, uh, And, oh, where's my friend? The bass player. Yes, the bass player also. But, yeah, that's it. Just, right. just those three. <laughs> and then while we're on intros, do you guys also want to say your ages? But not just your real age, but your actual age and your mental age. Like, kid at heart, Ooh. also. Okay, Dorian. Alright, so my actual age is 27, and my mental age is like 49. For real? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were kidding. You're right. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mental age would be probably like 26.5. Oh, fair. What about you, Dorn? Uh, I'm 23. Uh, yeah. My age would probably be... 18 and a half. Yeah, we like the half steps here. Yeah. What about you? Me? Uh, I am 18, but I would probably say 12. Fair 12's not enough. bad, not a bad age. That was, a, a, good that year. was a chill age for it was me. A good year. Yeah. Drag balls, are you crying. Yeah. Spankings. I was overweight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, what is the biggest difference you guys have noticed since you started with Victory Records? Um, probably just the level of like professionalism that we take in ourselves, you know, like we uh, just funny because the way we set it off. Oh yeah, <laughs> like um, uh, like they really like put a lot of fuel behind us, you know. They 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 gave us the opportunity, like yo, you can do this, and you know we started taking ourselves a lot more seriously and started making our decisions more like you know strategically, you know, and started trying to be more professional in our sound and. You know, image and all that stuff, and uh, that was probably the biggest change. Is like we realized that it could, is a possibility, so we definitely like took the entire thing uh, more seriously for sure. Nice. Do you have anything to add to that, or? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Like the the professionalism and the fact that we could really hone in on the shit that we were actually trying to say and, and push across a lot more eyes and ears were in our direction after that point. So. All right. Um, and then I feel all interviews have to have at least a couple cliche questions. Mm -hmm. And so to help get them out of the way, I have something called the cliche can. Nice. So you nice. Draw a cliche question, and you're the only one that has to answer it. Cool. I like it. This is fun. Just, you know, I have massive hands. I can never get out of there. Hold on, we gotta get a good one. You want me to go? Yeah, I want you to go first. If you could collab with anyone from the past or present, who would you want to do so with? Ooh, that's a good one though. Oh jeez. Okay, okay. Let's see. Um I'd have to say I would love to do I would love to do a collab with Metro Boomer. Like the second our manager Casey like even like jokingly hinted at that, it'd be so cool to do like a low tempo, like acoustic stringy vibe song with like a really sick Metro Boomin. You know, made beat and or melody behind it. That'd be sick. That's just me. With Drake on it. With Drake, yeah. I'll feature Drake for sure, but I mean. <laughs> That's good, Dorian. Yes. I got, which of your songs has the most meaning to you? Uh, I would have to say, probably Damage Kids or A Light in the Dark. Uh, Damage Kids because it's basically a song to myself, a younger version of myself that I wrote uh, as a, the older version of myself. So that was like, bit of a challenge to kind of confess a lot of things and to dive into that mentality and then a light in the dark because it's a, a bow to my uh, internal struggles that I've dealt with and still on occasion deal with um, they the whole record is just like honest and blunt and uh, it has a lot of value to me but those two songs probably mean the most to me I would say all right good reasoning I can take those back for you okay that's good and then, which of your music videos was the most fun to film? 
The most fun I was would say come and go. probably yeah, probably come and go. It was very lax. Everyone yeah. was super nice. We didn't have to be good at anything, which worked because we all sucked at roller well, derby. We yeah. found out all really bad at it. And you know, it was just it was fun. Like we just skated around in circles. It was like middle school at Skateland all over again. You know? Yeah. It was it was it was pretty cool. Other than getting like beat up a little bit, which yeah, did happen. Um, it was way more it was way more fun than it was painful. It was like really cool to be beat up by babes all day long. Yes. And then that sounds crazy, but it was, it was cool. And actually, that shit is hard. Like I don't know. I hope there's people that that aren't out there that think that uh, roller derby is easy because it's not. Easy. It's just not. It's, it's just not, not skating easy. around. It's like being able to hold balance and be aggressive and transfer your weight and save it at the same time. It's just it's a lot to think about. And so. I just gave up and I just, I just allowed myself to fall. It was fun. Also, were you, were you, were you guys supposed to be bad in the video, or did that just kind of happen? It was like you were supposed to be, but like it just kind of happened. Yeah. <laughs> like they were like, yeah, you're supposed to be bad, and they were like, well, let's, you know, try to, try to see what we can do, kind of thing, like make it look more realistic, yeah. and it ended up looking like less realistic by how bad we were naturally. Oh. Yeah. So. Yeah. Alright then. Kind of just, it all came Thanks, out Dad. <laughs> uh, what do you want people to think when they hear the name Broadside? Broadside, sorry. You know, I would like, uh, in all honesty, just just that honesty, uh, straightforward, at times cutthroat, and very just no bullshit, no gimmicks. Um, it's just real music from real real people. Yeah, just genuine. That's the only thing we've ever really hope to convey in yeah. the strongest way. Like, it's not to impress anyone, it's not to fit a mold of anything, it's just <clears throat> straightforward guys who want to be Justin Timberlake but want to cry like Adele. <laughs> Good. Good description. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to play a little game. Yes. Uh, you're both going to do an impression of someone else in the band and the other one of you has to guess who you're impersonating. <laughs> All right, go for this it. Maybe. Oh, oh, me. Yeah, okay. you bud. I'm trying to think. Okay, let's see. Um. Dang. Do you want to do another question while you think and come back to it? Oh no, I got one. Go for Should it. Just come at me. Miles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love you, dog. All right. Let's see. I got one. All right. Do you guys ever think like? Space. Me. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, damn it. That was good. That was good. That's. Oh, <laughs> I feel like there's a little bit of a story there. No, it's just the way I am. Like he nine mumbles nine, and he's nine, like really yeah. Nine times out of ten, when I talk to people, I I can't vocalize myself very loud. People can't understand what I say, and nine times out of ten, the things running through my head are space. Like. Space related things, black hole related things, <laughs> just Edgar Allan Poe, dreary, freaking stupid stuff, and uh, conspiracy theories. So, yeah. All right. Just, but that's why his like, handle is like Enrique Mumbles. Is it still that? Yeah, the Mumbles. Because it. it's just, it's, it because it's like a, I'll start like this and then uh, and you get the point. And right, then you just end up being like, dude, what are you saying? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, jumping back to questions, what are three things that you believe you should always bring on tour? Besides Ooh. the obvious. Girls. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go for it. Um, you start first. You go first. Three go. things. Um, I would say, I would definitely say like disinfected spray slash wipes. Yes. Because people get sick all the time. Awesome. It's so easy for germs to like get spread and. Mm. As, as a vocalist, like, it's so imperative to, like, stay healthy and, you know, and it's so easy for people to get sick. So it's like, we're, we're all, like, he always, like, quarantines himself with a scarf, like, covering his face when people are sick and stuff like that. And the best way to avoid it is to just, like, try to be healthy as much as possible, disinfect and spray. Um, emergency. Emergency. For the same crucial. reasoning, but it's a, it'll save your life in any situation. And... My third item would be probably a book to distract yourself 
from all the stupid shit in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Stupid shit. No, it's just nice to be able to separate yourself from, even though like it's cool to be in a band, it's awful to be in a van most of your life, so it's cool to distract yourself uh, outside of something from the digital world being your phone, you know? Yeah. Nice. And apparently Christmas lights, too. I like those. Yes. Yeah, you know, we like to keep putting Christmas around here, so. Do those turn on, or? They did yeah. at one point. Do you want to plug them in? Let's see if they work. They may, I hope they, they work. don't work, I get 200 bucks. That is a lot. <laughs> Let me see. Come here. Come here, Fwing. <laughs> Holy oh. Lord! Oh, half of them work. There we go. Oh, the part that the camera can't see. <laughs> yeah. Too chill. There you go. Here we go. Because you know, everybody needs. There you go. There we go. There it is. That's what. <laughs> That's what keeps people alive. Nice. <laughs> Just hold them. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Christmas time. Me, me, me. But we spent uh, the majority of our holiday. We just we did a full U.S. with this band called Rome from the U.K. And oh, okay, they do that too. And uh, handguns. And we did a full U.S. with them. And then like four days before Christmas. We did four holiday shows with Stay Champ, so we didn't get to spend much time um, at home. So we, we had to do it up the best way we could and tried to stay as unsad as we could. So we got one row of lights. So we got one row of lights, and they did the job. They used to work. So. Nice. The next question I ask every time, and it's a little odd. If two of you in the band had to get married to each other, who would it be? Go ahead, Dory. No, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Me and Dorian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy enough. Um, so on a more serious note, have there been any the show must go on moments where you weren't quite sh sure how it was gonna work, aside from tonight? Yeah, I mean, uh, Dory and I were put in a situation over the summer uh, where our other van broke down and the engine blew on that so there was just no fixing it and the guys were stranded at a hotel working uh, to pay, pay working during the, the day rooms. to pay for the hotel at night and Dorian and I hopped in our friend's van this band called Old Again they were nice enough to put us in the very back and we just finished the rest of the tour acoustic on a whim we rented a car drove six hours to the show um, learned all the songs actually, acoustic whilst in the car. Yeah, we actually got to that show, the promoter bill, 10 minutes beforehand. Yeah, and everybody was walking out. We gathered We didn't everyone. get our guarantee. Right. We didn't even get the opportunity to play. Everyone was sitting outside. We were like, crap, this sucks. And then the owner was like, yo, if you guys want to set up and play and set up merch, it's totally cool. We did, and we ended up like surpassing what our guarantee would have been in merch yeah. sales. And we it killed like, it. That was a good night. That was us. fun. Yeah, it was a really fun show. And it was but, so, like, spur of the Yeah, was that great. was the show must go on type moment. Uh, I've been like heavily sick a few times, but I'm not one of those people who likes to just bounce on a show. And so I'll make we'll make the best of it, you know. And that's Dorian comes in clutch with that because he's a really good singer, so he helps out a lot with that. Um, and I think was there anything else you can think of? That was like the most. That was probably the most crazy thing that I've we've done, especially being in a touring band. I mean, you could just give up and be like, I'm just gonna go home. But we were like. You know, we want to keep going. I don't just want to sit around and we might as well make the best of it. And it actually sounded really cool. Thus, getting us on this acoustic tour. Yeah. Because now, if we wouldn't have done that, we wouldn't have known that we could do acoustic at all. So. Yeah, it definitely opened us up to more like avenues and different, you know, ways of touring in the future. Nice. And I have to say, I might have to stop asking that question because this is the second time I've planned to ask that. And both times now the band's fan broke down and almost didn't make the show. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's your fault. No, I'm just um, what is one show you will never forget? Probably our record release show for me. Our record release show in our hometown sold out. People went absolutely apeshit. There was like 400 people just like going nuts all the time. And I couldn't stop smiling. My face hurt from smiling. Not a bad reason. Yeah. I would, I would say, I'm kind of torn, but I definitely, I kind of want to say Amityville. Oh yeah, New York. Was, we we did four dates up north with Rarity, Transit, and State Champs, and we played. I can't remember the name of the venue. Oh, dang, it wasn't Music Hall. But 
it was like it was sold out show and obviously not for us but the people there were so like acceptive and so like energetic for all the bands you know and to be like you know in another state and have like that many people going yeah. that crazy I was like oh my god it was so it was so fun that was, that was such a fun show that was probably I like that yeah I agree cool um, so if you had to pick one song that you were the most pumped about from the minute you wrote it, you're the most excited about right away, which song would that be? That's a good question. Uh, for me, it was Coffee Talk. Like, that was one of the songs that stayed consistent from the beginning of writing it until the end. Um, yeah. But Playing in Traffic was another one, too. Yeah. It was like when we heard that, we were like, this is weird, it's wild, people are going to not get it. It's aggressive, and it's just... Yeah, that song that song resonated with me a lot because like throughout the recording process I was there the entire time and and you know when I was doing certain writing parts for certain songs like that one had the most different ideas thrown into it like our, our producer pushed us into very different directions and to do very different things and that one out of everything had the most outlandish ideas go you know in different directions and it was so cool to see something, you know, so far-fetched at the time, like come together in a really balanced way. Yeah. A, really, a lot of hours and ideas went into that song, and I think that's why I, I loved it the second we started, like, you know, writing it. It was, it was sick. I like that song. Thanks. Just because of the stuff behind it. Um, in honor of all the broadside tattoos I've seen on Twitter lately, do any of you want to share the meaning of one of your tattoos? Yeah, Torin, totally. you got any you need to... Um, you go first. Uh, let's see. Well, I'll go to this one because it's most easy. I have the words out of step tattoo right above. One of my favorite tattoos I have is right here. It's a minor threat lyric. Uh, basically the song was just about being a black sheep of the world. like being out of step at the time um he was basically saying like i can't keep up with the world like everybody around me is going one way and i just can't keep up i'm the black sheep i'm out of step with the way that the rest of the world is walking it resonated with me i grew up listening uh, to hardcore still do and i just think it was like a really badass way to say like i'm not like you um, and i'm not going to try to run to keep after your shadow so i got a tattoo right where it was visible enough and uh by a really cool artist back in Richmond when I still live there, so I would say that was fine. I have also the most easiest one to reach. I have this little shark right here. It's um, done by Amanda Slater at Lakeside Tattoo in Richmond. She's great. Um, it was just like I there's there's a more personal meaning behind it, but it was one of my favorite uh, animals growing up as a kid. It is my favorite animal still to this day. And I did so much research about it, and I wanted to go into like you know studying sharks, and I've always wanted to swim with sharks. Hopefully, we get the chance to one day while we're on tour or something. No. Yeah, dude, I did, I'm, I'm telling you. All you, bro, I'll watch you, bro. I'll go in the cage. I saw and all deep that blue sea, bro. Bro, L O Cool J live. Oh, chill. Yeah. I was swim. That's chill. I was swim. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, that's, I like sharks. I like turtles. I like turtles. <laughs> I like disco paper. <laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, do you guys have any last words you want to say? Uh, thank you. Yeah, just I appreciate you. Thank you for everyone either watching or supporting us in any way at all. Whether it is watching or coming to shows or, you know, merch. Or talking shit on Twitter. Either yeah, way, it's like trust me. you're just spreading broadside and I appreciate we you. We love all of it, I promise. Honestly, we do. Yeah. And thank you for being yeah. cool and having cool hair. Yeah. And getting in our van. Just and cool hair, it's chill. It's chill. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see that. It's purple. Yeah, yes. that's important. But yeah, I think that's yeah. good. All right. I will put their links in the description. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and share it. And bye. Bye. Bye.